Welcome. In this particular video, we're going to show you how to import an ISM repository into application data. And for this video, we're specifically importing an ISM repository into STAD Pro. Now, ISM is not intended to store all of the information that any of the client's applications might contain. Rather, it is intended to store and communicate a consensus view of data that is common to two or more of its client applications. We're going to go ahead and observe this as we import our model from ISM into STAD Pro by adding the structural data that you, as the engineer, will need in order to complete the structural design. We are now at the point in our workflow where we are ready to create a new STAD Pro model and import our ISM repository. Now in STAD Pro, you have two different options for your workflow. You can create a model using an analytical modeling workflow or a physical modeling workflow. When working with an ISM repository, it is typically easier to go ahead and import the model as a physical model. While doing this, it means all of the physical members that are present in the ISM repository, as well as any plate elements, will be able to be imported. Once in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler, I'm going to select the Model tab in the Ribbon Toolbar and select the iTwin Services. Now through the STAD Pro Physical Modeler, you can import a model from your local drive or from the cloud, depending upon which type of workflow you're going with. Here you can select the two different options that are available. I'm going to go ahead and use my local network to import the model. Next, I'm going to select which ISM repository I wish to import. And I'm going to go ahead and select the ISM repository, which for this example was supplied to me, the structural engineer, by the architect. Once I select my ISM repository, I can click on the sync button and then edit the settings. Here I can enter all of your offset information. This will basically control where in space the model will be brought into the STAD Pro Physical Modeler. And I can enter the interoperability information. This will include some connectivity tolerances that you can go ahead and enter. Now for this particular model, I went ahead and reviewed the proposed nodal locations within my ISM repository. So I'm gonna leave all of my tolerances set to their default and take a look at how this information imports. The last thing I'm gonna to do to kick off this process is, put, is click on the pull button. While the ISM repository is being pulled into the STAD Pro Physical Modeler, the iTwin Analytical Synchronizer will appear on your screen. Here you can enter the workflow information and you can review the model information within your ISM repository. Our goal for this step in the process is to go ahead and review all the different objects within the ISM repository and decide what to bring into STAD Pro and perhaps what not to bring into STAD Pro. So let's go ahead and start with our members. And I like to take a look at the different types of objects within my ISM repository. And what we're gonna see here is we're gonna see all of the members that were added to the repository. And then we're gonna see a field over here. Let me pull this over. Now what I'm gonna do when I'm taking a look at the curved member information, these are all of my beams, columns, and braces within my model, I'm gonna take a look at the field that is entitled change. This will control 
what comes into STAD and what doesn't. Anything that's undecided won't come into STAD Pro. Anything that's accepted will. Anything that's rejected won't. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this information. Now, I don't actually see anything in my view window here. It's because I don't have anything accepted yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select everything within this model, turn it to accept, and then do a preview. This will allow me to see basically everything that's present in this particular model. Now, as I take a look at this model, now that I can see it in my screen, I'm going to decide what belongs in STAD Pro and perhaps what doesn't. As I'm taking a look at this model, I can see that I actually have two separate structures that are in this single ISM repository. I have a wood trellis over at the right-hand side of the system, and I have a steel canopy over at the left-hand side. Now, I could decide to bring all of this information into STAD Pro in one go, in one model, format, but I will get a disjointed structure warning. I'm also going to notice that the wood trellis, maybe perhaps I might consider designing that in another one of my structural applications, such as RAM elements, which can do a full wood design. So as I'm taking a look here, I'm going to decide for right now, what I'm going to work on is my steel canopy over at the left-hand side of my structure. So what I want to do is I want to basically reject anything that doesn't belong there. Now what I like to do is I like to take a look at different perspectives, maybe an elevation, and then make a selection. I can make selections over in the table at the left hand side of the screen, or I can make a selection in the view window, which might be easier depending upon what it is you're trying to select. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything within the wood trellis type structure. And I've decided that I'm going to go ahead and reject those instead. Here I can go ahead and click preview again and return to my isometric view. Now that I've identified the steel canopy structure that I'm working on first with STAD Pro, I'm also going to take a look at the objects within this structure to see what belongs in my STAD Pro model and perhaps what might not. As I'm taking a look at the structure, I can see that the architect went ahead and created the spread footings and the piers directly in the BIM model, which have now been imported into the ISM repository. What I'm gonna to choose to do as the structural engineer is I'm gonna to choose to go ahead and design those piers and those footings in STAD Foundation Advanced. And I'm gonna send the support information to STAD Foundation Advanced directly from my STAD Pro model after I perform the analysis and design. So that being said, do I want to bring in the piers and footings directly into the STAD Pro model? And for this particular scenario, I'm gonna choose no. So let me go ahead and unselect those as well. And turn those to rejected. To view that information updated, let's go ahead and again click on the preview button and I can go back to the isometric view. Now the last thing I'm going to take a look at is all of the surface members within the model. Now I can see I do have some surface members up at the roof of the system. If I take a closer look, these are half inch thick steel pieces. And I also have some miscellaneous steel. We'll go ahead and say we have some bracket information and some base plate information. So these are quarter inch thick. This one is a quarter inch thick. And I also have some base plate information. These were drawn as one and a half inches thick. Now the brackets that I see over here, these are actually holding on to the architectural pieces that are wrapping the columns and I'm not going to be designing those directly within my STAD Pro model, so I'm going to go ahead and choose to reject those. I'm also going to take a look at my base plates and decide that, well, actually what I'm going to do is design my base plates with RAM connection, so I'm going to do that directly within the STAD Pro environment. I'm not going to bring in the base plate steel from this ISM repository. 
Now that being said, let's go back and return to the home area and let's go ahead and zoom on out. Now all of those miscellaneous steel pieces were created as surface elements. So we're going to go ahead and select the surface members. Now one of the things I like to do when I am deciding what to bring in and what not to bring in is to use some of the filters within the ISM repository. So let's go ahead and tell the program that we're specifically working on our surface members. I'm going to select surface members and then click OK. Now it's isolated just my surface members. So if I click accept or reject, I'm just affecting the surface members and nothing else in the ISM repository. In addition to that, I've already taken a look at the types of sections that are appropriate for STAD Pro and the types that aren't. So for this particular model, I'm going to say those half inch plates at the roof level, I do want to bring those into STAD Pro. I'm going to unselect those right here, but everything else I'm going to leave selected. Let's go ahead and click OK. Once I've set my filters appropriately, I can click select all to select all of them. Once they're selected, I will see them in this purple color. And I'm going to go ahead and say reject. And then click the preview button. Now that I've reviewed all of my surface members, let's go ahead and turn off our filters and take a look at the rest of the information. Now at this point, I have decided which members and which plate elements should be imported into my STAD Pro physical modeler. To finish off my workflow and officially bring this information in, I will go ahead and click on the update button, which will then build the model in the STAD Pro environment. I am seeing that the poll was successful and then I can go ahead and take a look at the model in the 3D viewer. Now, once I get in the STAD Pro environment, one of the first things I like to do is perform an integrity check. This will flag any additional information that might be incorrect in the BIM model. This would be things like overlapping members, duplicate members, node connectivity, those types of pieces of information. Those might not have been readily apparent when I was looking at the model in the iTwin analytical synchronizer. So to run an integrity check, we're going to go to our STAD Pro Physical Modeler, select the Model tab in the Ribbon Toolbar, and click on the Integrity Check icon. Here I'm going to ask the program to go ahead and look for these common errors and validate my model. Here I can see that none were reported. So I can already see that the BIM model is set up correctly. Everything looks good thus far. And let's go ahead and close the integrity check. In addition to that, I can also preview what the analytical model is going to look like. Now this is an important step in the workflow because this will let me see how the nodes will be connected. And again, making sure those placement points are at the appropriate location in your BIM model is fairly significant to make sure you don't have any girders or beams that are unsupported to make sure that your columns are connected and everything is cleaned up. To view your analytical model, we can go to the View tab in the Ribbon Toolbar and click on the Analysis Model icon. This will also be another area that it will catch any type of modeling issues that you might be seeing. Now here, as I zoom on in, I can see everything looks pretty good. Um, I can see there might be a slight issue right here. You could see here that this beam member should be connected to the column. It's not quite there, okay? So what am I gonna do about this? Well, I can move this node once I get into STAD Pro, or I can go back to the architect on this project and say, I think we need to adjust the way that member was modeled. Each way should get you where you wanna go. At this point, I'm going to say, I'm going to go ahead and adjust that information directly within STAD Pro since it seems to be just a couple beams that that is affecting. So let's go ahead and turn off the analysis model. Now, as I'm in the STAD Pro environment, after I check the integrity and what the analytical model is going to look like, 
The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to review the imported information. And I typically like to review the imported section information, section properties, and material properties. So let's go ahead and see where that information is being shown in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler. If you go to the Spreadsheet tab in the Ribbon Toolbar and click on the Member Properties icon, we should be able to see the section properties and material properties that were assigned to each member within the model. I'm going to go ahead and scroll on down and make sure I don't have any members that were not assigned a section property or material property. Now if the program, meaning STAD Pro, recognized the section property, it will go ahead and assign the section property from the standard steel database. If there's a section property, say a rectangular member, a circular member, sometimes a structural T that is not quite recognized by the database because of the way things are created within STAD Pro, it'll go ahead and create that geometry using a prismatic section. So I can see here all of the section properties. This is 100% steel structure. All of the section properties have been pulled from the AISC database that was installed with STAD Pro. So everything looks there, good there. And the material properties were brought in from the ISM repository, which were brought in from the BIM model. Now that being said, I do still want to take a look at that, those material properties that were imported. Okay. To do that, I'm going to go to the catalog tab in the ribbon toolbar. I'm going to see the different material properties that were brought in. So within each of these materials that were brought in and utilized in the members that are brought into the STAD Pro model, I'm going to take a look at all of the material properties that were assigned. Now, all of these different parameters that define a material might not be present in your ISM repository or your BIM model, even if you brought this material into your STAD Pro environment. These would be things like modules of elasticity, Poisson's ratio, and so forth. So I typically am going to review all of that information once I get over into STAD Pro because I want to make sure that all of the structural information that I'm depending upon as a structural engineer is accurate. So I'm going to go ahead and review all this information that includes any of the concrete or steel materials that were brought in. If I do need to make any changes, I can just double click on that particular material property and change that information here. Now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and save my model and continue on with my process. So that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at what was imported. All of my structural geometry, section properties, and material properties have come in from my BIM model through the ISM workflow. Now that I'm in the STAD Pro environment, I'm going to finish my structural engineering of this structure. This would include things like adding in any appropriate specifications, things like member end fixity, axial restrictions. I can enter in the support information, loads, analysis, and design commands.